In today's video, we'll look at how we can create a mailing list for our Bricks form or Bricks Forge Pro forms based on the user role or a custom meta field using dynamic shortcodes. So if that's something that interests you, stick around and we'll jump right into it. So here we have a simple contact form created using Bricks native form. And when I fill in the form, and I press send, you'd see, see a message successfully sent to, it lists two names, and these are just based on the role, they are authors on this website. So let's see how we can create this form. And when I go ahead and check on my phone, I can see that the, the forms were submitted successfully to those two emails, not to the entire emails on my website. It doesn't send even to the admin, just to the emails that I have dedicated, which are based on the user role. So now let's go ahead and see the plugins we'll be working with. For this tutorial, the tools we'll be working with are Bricks version 1.10, Bricks Forge version 2.2.5, just to show you that you can work with both the native Bricks form and Bricks Forge Pro forms. Then for the meta field, which is attached to the user, I used Jet Engine to create it. So that is Jet Engine version 3.5.3, just to show you that it works with any meta field plugin. So it pods ACF jet engine and that's just attaching a meta field to the user. And finally, I'm using dynamic O dynamic shortcodes to create the user query. So let's go ahead and check out the page. Then I will explain how the query works and we'll go from there. So before we go ahead and check out the page, first, let me show you the users that I've created. So I'll go under users and then I'll display all users and I created three users basically two are authors and one is the administrator then within the users one of the user is given the role of a director so using jet engine so let me go ahead and show you how I created it the others are just given a role of employee so if you go under Jet Engine, Meta Boxes. I created a user extra meta box. It is attached to users and it's just one meta field and it's a select field. And basically it just has the few options so director, employee, secretary. Just to say if you want that any of your mails from the contact form will go to the secretary so you are not really specifying the exact email for the secretary but in case maybe the secretary changes over time you don't have to go into all your forms to try to change the secretary again all you have to do is just as long as you put in a new secretary and you assign the role of secretary to that person it can be multiple people they will all get the email ideally you would want to like use like an alias but if you don't have an alias to use or maybe those emails are on multiple domains. So you may want to use this option so that you just give it a role or you give it a meta field and you can now just attach that to the email so that whenever it changes in the future, it will always still send the email to the right person. So now let's go ahead and check out the form. Then I'll go ahead and show you the dynamic shortcode. So I'll go to pages and Pro forms to so edit the form. So here is the form. And all I'm doing here is when you come to the form itself and then you go under actions, I set it up to have an email. Then the email, all I just did was use a short code for the address because I first changed it to custom email address. Then I just used a short code. Because it is a query shortcode and it's querying users, you cannot do it directly in the builder. You have to use a power shortcode because those are personal information and things that only an administrator can create. But once the administrator has created it, then an editor can work with it. 
But first, we have to create it using the PowerShell code. And it is very simple. I'll leave a link to all the documentation that you can use in the description and in the comments. So as you can see here, all I'm just saying is power mail list at role equal to author. So that means only sending mails to all the authors. I can also use something different. So like the meta field, which I'll show you now. So let's go ahead and see how the whole thing works within the PowerShell code. So let me go ahead and open the preview. Then I'll go under dynamic short codes and power short codes. And it is really simple. So we're going to create one now. So let me go ahead and delete all of these now. We don't need them. So I'll create a new one and I'll give it the same title. So mail dash list. So this is now the short code we'll be using within Bricks or you can even use it in any page builder. So Bricks, Gutenberg, Elementor, anywhere. You write it here and then you can use it in any page builder. So now within the content, what we need to do is to use the query. So let me go ahead and show you the page. The three documents you need are the query, dynamic shortcodes, everything will be linked in the description. This just shows you how to do the query. Then for user query, this is an expanded thing. So everything you can use within the user query. So you can set the role, you can use role in, role not in, meta key and meta value. For today's tutorial, the main ones we'll be using are role, then meta key and meta value. The role is things like your administrator, editor, author, then the key and the value are when you're using a meta field. So those are the three major things we're going to be using. And this is for extra information of how to retrieve data from a user. So the syntax is just user column and then the field. So if you want the email, you just say user column email. If you want the name, user column name, display name, and so on and so forth. So you can go ahead and see all the examples within this document. So these three documents explain all you need to know about the user query. So for the user query, because we want to query all users, the first example we'll do is all users with a specific role, which is role equal to administrator. So first we query, so you say, open the curly brace and do query. Let me zoom in a bit. Put a column and say users in this case, and I'll close it. So now we need to add in some key arguments at what we just want to query for is the role equal to author. So role equal to author. So now this will just give us an array of the user IDs for all the users that have the role equal to author. But what we need now is the email address because that's what we're going to be using within the email list. So for that, we now have to use a for loop so that we loop through those IDs and then generate the email for us. So we just open a curly brace at the start again and do for column. We give a placeholder. So I'll just say person or something. You can use anything as the placeholder. Then after the query, you now have to put in the template of what the output will look like. So the output we just need to retrieve the user email from that ID. So I open and close the curly brace and say user column email at ID equal to, then I'll use that placeholder, get person. So it will be for each of these authors from the query, it will be getting the ID for each of them and then it will be pulling the email from that ID then we need to add in a separator. So after I've gotten this user, we open the curly brace, closed it, closed it. So this is just closed. We need to now close the for loop. So I'll close that again. And I put the final thing, which is what is the separator? We just did a comma because within the email list, if I go back to the page, you'd see they said, 
that multiple addresses separated by comma. So we just need to separate the email addresses by comma. So I come back and say at, I can write it in full and say separator, or I'll just write it in short form, SEP equal to, and then I just put the quotation mark, comma, quotation mark. And that's basically it. This is how easy it is. So once I save this, there should be no error. And now when I go back to my post, I go to the form, whether you're using Bricks form or Bricks Forge Pro forms, they have the same system. So I'll now come under the email. That is after you've added the actions and set it to email. Then under email, you'd come under, let me just clear this. It will be admin email by default, but I'll now set it to custom email address. Then I'll just come back and copy this short code and then paste it in here and save. If you want to know whether the short code is working properly, you can now just take a basic text, just drop in a basic text somewhere in the post. So this is the basic text and I'll just put in that power short code and see if it works. So yeah, it works. It is pulling the email addresses correctly. So that means it is working. It's putting them in commas as well. Everything is working. So now I can go back and I'm sure that it is working. So form under email, and then I just put that power code. And that's it. That's how you can get it easily using the role. But say you want to take it further, you want them to be able to choose the role from here rather than just it being static as author. You want the user to be able to like determine, okay, he wants, is it just authors or is it administrator right from here in the builder? Then you can come back to your dynamic short code. And then rather than using a static value for the role, we can now put in another short code here, which is kind of like a placeholder short code. So what I'll do is I'll use another function called the let function, which allows us to put in variables. So I'll go back to the beginning, put another curly brace, and I'll use the let function, put a colon, open a square brace, and then close the square brace. Now say at, let me put in a new line. Then what you need to now do is put in the placeholder name again. So this time I'll use the placeholder name as role equal to open and close curly brace, say key args. So this is what we normally write inside the short code that is called the key args. What we write here in the short code or under here, I've put at role equal to, this is the key args. So key args colon double pipe symbol. And then I'll write the name I want to be using as a placeholder within my short code. I'll just use role again. So R O L E. Then I'll close the curly brace and see everything is working. So let me indent everything so that it's easy to see. So I'll put each of them in a new line, the query and the other one. So indent. So this is how it is. So for, let's put this in a new line. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So we get this. So let all of these within the square braces and then we put the key args at the end. Then within these square braces, we can now use this placeholder that we have created. So we'll replace this author with get role. And in case there's no role, we can now put a fallback. So I'll just say fallback equal to the administrator. So if the person doesn't put any value, it will just default back to the administrator and then send the email to the administrator. Or you may not want people to use the administrator. You may want something else. So it all depends on how you want to set it up. So that's it. And everything is set up correctly. 
but let me just use author then i can save this the shortcode is successfully saved that means there's no error so now within this i can now say role equal to author and save and yeah that's it this is how we can get this we can do that same thing here so now we can say at role equal to author and it gets me the same thing so save that okay so we have the next step is done but this is only based on role what if we want to take it a step further and use the meta field rather than a role so that we can just set a meta field that okay this person is the secretary that person is the director something that is completely different from the actual role on the website so we can come back and this time let's go ahead and see what is the the meta key because all we need to do here is rather than role we we'll use like i showed here we're just going to use these two things here meta key and meta value so the first thing is let me just make this again into a new line indent it so it's easy to see so meta key and the next one is going to be meta value so that's under the wp query meta value is equal to so for the key let me delete this uh, this shows that I, I did something wrong that's why it's not indenting correctly because it should be after like this so yeah so now it's, it's correct because i was wondering why it wasn't indenting properly so we have the meta key and the meta value so for the meta key all we need to do is go under the jet engine so go under jet engine then meta boxes then i'll go ahead and check for the key so the key is this company underscore role so that's the key i'll come back and put that as the key then for the value is going to be the value we put for them so either secretary or employee or director so in this case i'll now use this role as the meta value so it's easy to just use or so just say get role since so i already put this placeholder here as the key args so then i can put a fallback so maybe i'll say the fallback should be the director or the secretary so if somebody doesn't put in the exact value then it will just default back to the secretary so let's save this now i can say come back here if i refresh this page you see that it will no longer be giving me the correct value because that meta value is not set up so let me come back to the basic text and then rather than role equal to author i'll say role equal to maybe director and now it gives me the director email if I say something like secretary, if I do employee, it will give me the email for those people. But that's it. So you cannot use this. So that's why you have to first test the code in like a text editor first to be sure that it's working. Then you can now come back to your form. And under the email, the sent to custom email, you just put that short code there. So power mail list at role equal to director. And that's it. So I can save this and there we have it. So that's how easy it is for you to query your user and then use that in your mail list for your contact form. And that, that makes it dynamic. So in case the user changes, as long as they still have that role, they will get the email. So I hope this video was helpful. If you found it helpful, please do leave a like, share the video, write in the comment that it helped you out. And if you have any questions please do leave them in the comment section so that i can help you out any way i can so until next time enjoy bye
Thank you.